in a tightly controlled invite-only event hidden from public view and attended by only top automotive elites and industry giants. Christian von Koenigsegg, founder and CEO of the high-performance automaker Koenigsegg, revealed a next-generation engine technology that could displace electric vehicles entirely. He introduced the revolutionary engine design, a monster in itself with power and torque, like you can't believe, in a very friendly way. An innovation that isn't just a step forward, but the start of a whole new automotive era inside the camless revolution. Christian von Koenigsegg didn't just stroll onto the event at the old airbase runway in Engelholm. He owned the moment. Under the soft glare of studio lights, he brought out a short, wide-bodied carbon fiber test mule, tapped a button, and suddenly silence gave way to something entirely new. Gone was the mechanical chatter of cams and chains. In its place, a clean, sharp hiss. That sound came from dozens of tiny air-driven pistons firing with mind-bending speed and precision. This was Koenigsegg's lighted engine running on a radical system called free valve. There's no camshaft, no timing belt, just ultra-fast pneumatic actuators, all controlled by artificial intelligence, adjusting every valve hundreds of times per second, which means more power from each drop of fuel and way less waste. This wasn't some wild last-minute invention. Koenigsegg and his engineers have been refining free valve for nearly a decade. Back in 2016, they shocked everyone by fitting it into a little 1.6L Chinese hatchback with wild results. 47% more power, 45% more torque, and 15% less fuel use, all just by ditching the camshaft. That success proved free valve wasn't just a cute gimmick. It could work even beyond commuter cars. So Koenigsegg's team kept going, upgrading the actuators, improving the AI, and perfecting the oil-air hydraulics until the system was tough enough to survive inside a world-class hypercar. The first real-world result was a beast of a motor nicknamed the Tiny Friendly Giant, a 2L three-cylinder twin-turbo that delivers 600 horsepower, yes, 600, from an engine that weighs just 154 Li B. Stuck inside the four-seat JRA prototype, this Mega GT goes from 0 to 60 MEP in under 2 seconds and, with your foot down, hits 248 MEP. The trick is constant valve control. At cruising speeds, the engine sips fuel gently, but the second the turbos kick in, the valves snap open fully for maximum power, letting the engine act calm or crazy depending on your right foot. But Koenigsegg didn't stop there. Pairing that tiny friendly giant with his new in-house electric motor, Dark Matter, makes things go nuclear. The motor alone weighs just 86 lb, but makes 800 horsepower and 922 lb-ft of torque. Put the two systems together and you get a hybrid pushing out 700 horsepower and a jaw-dropping 8,100 lb-ft of torque at the wheels. All that power gets routed through Koenigsegg's custom 9-speed multi-clutch gearbox, which lets the car instantly jump from one gear to another. It's called light speed for a reason. Still, brute force was never the only goal. Koenigsegg and his team became obsessed with efficiency. Free valve's dyno tests already show it climbing toward the magic number, 50% thermal efficiency, nearly double what old school muscle cars managed, possible because this engine doesn't waste heat. Every cylinder breathes exactly what it needs, no more, no less. When the car is idling, the engine just closes all the valves and waits barely using fuel at all until you press the pedal again. And it's not picky about what you feed it. This engine can run on regular gas, pure methanol, Brazilian ethanol, even synthetic e-fuels made from captured carbon and clean electricity. Fill it up with Sweden's E95 biodiesel or straight up e-methanol, and you get almost net zero carbon emissions without needing to dig more lithium or strain the power grid. But talk is cheap in the world of supercars, so in early June 2025, Koenigsegg opened up the old Air Force hangar at their headquarters in Engelholm and invited a few test drivers and journalists to see the thing run. They watched a stripped-down JRA prototype, still wearing sensors but no camouflage, rocket down the runway on a tank filled with 95% ethanol, hitting 60 mipime in just 1.9 seconds again and again and breaking well before the markers at the end. The test logs showed every detail. Exact valve events, fuel trim adjustments, exhaust temps. The onboard AI was making real-time tweaks, 
shaving off drops of fuel while keeping the engine cool enough to protect the turbos. Those who were there described something surreal. It sounded like a normal engine, but not quite. The classic cam lobe rhythm was gone, replaced by a smooth hum while the turbos screamed like jet engines. Drivers said the throttle response felt instant. No delay, no turbo lag, no sluggish valves, just pure, unfiltered boost the moment their foot moved. One old-school engineer even joked that it felt like a volume knob for torque, because that's what it is. The magic isn't just in the engine's lungs, but in its brain. Every actuator is wired to high-speed sensors inside each cylinder, and the main computer is trained on millions of combustion cycles. The engine changes strategy on the fly. It can act like an Atkinson cycle, a Miller cycle, or even pull off quick two-stroke moves depending on load, RPM, and how aggressive the driver is being. Cruising on the highway, it'll shut down two of the three cylinders to save fuel, but switch to track mode and it loads up full lift profiles, pulling in as much air as possible and firing every 90 degree of crank rotation, meaning non-stop power with no wasted strokes. And it's tiny. By removing the cams, gears, belts, and bulky timing covers, Koenigsegg chopped about 8 inches off the engine's length and trimmed more than 70 pounds compared to a regular twin-turbo V6 making similar power. That smaller size lets designers do more, like move the passenger cabin forward, boost crash protection, or even make space for luggage in a four-seater that can outrun most motorcycles. So what does this mean for the future? Everyone keeps saying electric is inevitable, but Koenigsegg just smiles and shrugs. Standing next to a humming prototype, he says, why not have both? With the light eat engine, he's proving that combustion can change, it can get cleaner, it can be smarter, and it can still deliver that raw emotional thrill drivers crave without asking the planet to pay the price. It might not be the perfect solution, but it flips the argument. And how does this camless machine compare to the tough realities that battery cars still face? EV Reality Check Koenigsegg's wild new light eat engine already turned heads with its insane performance and that eerie, camless hiss. But Christian von Koenigsegg knows none of that matters unless it stacks up against the one thing everyone's talking about, electric vehicles. For the past 10 years, EVs have been sold as the clean future, the gold standard, so before we dive into how Koenigsegg might scale his invention, we have to be real about where the EV world actually stands in 2025 and what problems it's still dragging along. There's no denying the momentum. In just the first three months of this year, drivers around the world bought a little over 4 million all-electric cars, about 35% more than the same period last year. If that pace keeps up, the world will cross 20 million EV sales by year's end, roughly one out of every four new cars sold globally, most of that coming from China which is miles ahead of everyone else. The United States grew by about 10%, while Europe stayed flat at around a 20% share of total sales. But when you zoom in, the picture gets messier. Europe's car sales actually dipped in June, down about 4.4%. And even though EVs passed the 1 million mark for the first half of the year, most new sales came from cheaper Chinese brands like BYD, which chipped away at the market shares of Tesla and Stellantis. Jobs are just as important in this equation. A recent study by the International Council on Clean Transportation found that battery cell factories need about 144 workers per gigawatt hour. But most of those jobs are concentrated in just a few big facilities. On the other hand, a camless retrofit strategy like Koenigsegg's spreads the work across existing engine plants, assembly lines, and dealerships that keeps more people employed in more places, it's a model that unions in the U.S. Midwest and lawmakers in Germany are now paying close attention to. They worry that if battery megafactories become the only game in town, jobs and value could drain out of their home regions. Looking ahead, the data points toward a future of coexistence rather than one technology beating all the others. Bloomberg Neff now expects global sales of electric passenger cars to pass 39 million per year by 2030, with battery vehicles eventually dominating the market. But the International Energy Agency's Net Zero Roadmap shows the fastest emissions cuts come when small, high-use city cars go electric, while heavier-duty vehicles in rural areas rely on ultra-efficient engines burning low-carbon fuels. That kind of mixed system lets each technology do what it does best, instead of trying to force one solution on everything. Right now, 
the pieces are coming together. Governments are writing rules that allow any clean technology to compete. Automakers are investing in synthetic fuel plants just in case batteries don't go the distance. Drivers are still drawn to the emotional power of real engines, and the price gap between options is closing fast. Christian von Koenigsegg has said it before. There's no need to pick just one path. Innovation isn't a zero-sum game. Whether you end up with a whisper-quiet motor or a fierce camless growl, the real win is having choices because the best drivetrain for you might not be the best for someone else. And for the first time in a long while, that choice is finally back in your hands. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.